The Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, and the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, on the 23rd of July 2013, signed a memorandum of understanding in Accra with International Enterprise Singapore. Now, this is an investment promotion agency under Singapore's Ministry of Trade and Industry, all to attract more investment into the country. With this MOU, International Enterprise Singapore is expected to work with the GIPC, AGI and local businesses to promote meaningful business partnerships between the Ghanaian government and the Singaporean government. Tonight on eBusiness Journal, we profile IE Singapore's collaboration with our government. My name is Ama Pukia Mensa. Welcome to the show. <music> The scope of collaboration under the IE Singapore agreement with our Ghanaian government covers information sharing about business opportunities in the country, promotion of business partnerships in key growth sectors, and also facilitating capability development and training. Now, trade between Ghana and Singapore is about $1 billion currently, with investment totaling an amount of $250 million. So what are the possible areas the country is likely to see some form of investment as a result of this MOU, in an earlier recorded interview, I sat down with Mr. Tio Eng Chiong, the CEO of IE Singapore, and Li Yixian, the Singaporean Minister for Trade and Industry. Thank you so much for talking to ETV News. Sir. Thank you. We wanted to find out, looking at Singapore's success story as an economic success story, you've been touted all over the world for what you have been able to do to Singapore. What can Ghana learn from your example? What are some of the areas you can point to that we need to change to develop? IE Singapore or International Enterprise Singapore is a government agency. Our role is to promote international trade and also help Singapore companies invest overseas. Obviously, Singapore companies are much more familiar with Asia. Uh, so we are very much into Southeast Asia as well as China. But we believe that it is important for our companies to look beyond Asia. So Africa is a continent that we are very excited by because of the very rapid growth in recent years. We believe that the fundamentals are right for Africa. Uh, you have political stability, you have uh, fast growing and young population and you have governments that are serious about economic development and have done a lot of reforms to put in place a system and an environment that's pro-business. So we think there are good fundamental reasons for Africa to see, continue to see a very good growth in the years ahead. Yes. And for that reason, we feel that our companies should start to explore Africa. Uh, in Africa, we have two centres, one in Johannesburg and the other one in uh, Accra. Um, and these two centres will look at, obviously, Southern Africa as well as Western Africa. Uh, in Ghana, we think uh, it is a very good location, not only just to explore the economy of Ghana, but also to explore the whole region of Western Africa. Uh, in Ghana, you have a very stable uh, environment. Yes. You have many reforms that have been put in place. You have a young population. Uh, and, and we have seen a lot of these reforms that have already impacted uh, the economy. And you have a population that is growing in income. Yes. So we think the situation is right mm -hmm. for us to look into a, a place like Ghana. Looking at Asia's economic success and, of course, looking at Africa's potential for growth, there seems to be um, a partnership that has been formed between Asian countries and African countries. But there also seems to be some negative connotations to that in terms of looking at Asia just extracting all our resources for their gain. How exactly are you promoting the image that this is not so? Is this a true partnership where both benefits go both ways? Or are we just looking at Asia extracting our resources and getting nothing in return? Uh, Singapore companies are involved in a wide range of industries. For now, we believe that there are three areas in Ghana that we want to pay some attention to. First would be infrastructure development. We understand that Ghana is in a phase of infrastructure development and there will be many things that you want to do. On the other hand, Singapore companies have been involved in infrastructure development for the past 40 odd years. Uh, our companies have some track record in terms of the design, master planning of uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. and more importantly, in the operation and management of infrastructure in a very efficient manner. Mm -hmm. This could be in port management, it could be airport management, it could be power plant, it could be uh, water treatment or waste management. 
All these are various areas that I believe uh, a country like Ghana would also need as you grow. Yes. Uh, and I think our companies have the set of uh, capabilities and skills that can be applied in this case. Mm -hmm. A second area that we're interested in is, of course, oil and gas. Yes. Oil and gas is a very important sector in Ghana. Uh, you have your Jubilee oil field now. Uh, we believe that if you develop the oil and gas sector in a very sustainable way, it will become a very important part of your economy. Mm -hmm. And we have companies that are also very active in the oil and gas sector. We have um, big companies that are involved in the production of offshore oil rigs, FPSO and so on. Uh, These are uh, Keppel and San Marine. Mm -hmm. So these two companies obviously will be interested in oil and gas. But beyond the bigger companies, we also have a second tier companies that are involved in uh, services, in supply base, uh, management, involved in uh, vessel chartering to supply these kind of activities to the top tier companies. So we believe that second tier companies would also be very relevant as you develop the oil and gas sector. So oil and gas will be a second sector that we are very interested to explore. A third sector would be uh, really light manufacturing. Uh, light manufacturing in all kinds of goods. We believe that as the income of the people grow, uh, there will be increased demand for all kinds of things uh, in, in uh, from food processing to actually very basic uh, materials and goods. So we believe that a lot of companies in this country would be able to uh, contribute in this area. One company, for instance, will be Olam. Mm -hmm. Olam is a big company in Singapore that is involved in the food industry and in Ghana itself, it has got various food processing facilities. Yes. Yesterday, I visited the flour mill uh, that Olam has set up and that will be something that is very relevant as Ghana grows. And you've mentioned the uh, potential Ghana has of being a great business destination in Africa and attracting a lot of foreign investment. But looking at the attractiveness of our businesses, have you taken in consideration the infrastructural challenges because mm. if anything you're offering us some infrastructural solutions to our mm. problems but have you taken a look at how easy or how difficult it is mm. to do business in Africa mm. especially in Ghana? Mm. Obviously um, the infrastructure in Ghana today can be improved yes. and we believe that as you improve things will become better. I think the most important uh, question is really whether there is a, a in, intention to develop this infrastructure and from the various uh, meetings that we had with government officials and from what we can see, there's very serious intent to develop the infrastructure in Ghana and there are really things that are already being done. So we believe that uh, over time, this will get built up and the business environment can only become better over time. But we wanted to first ask you about Singapore's economic success story and how it's been promoted around the world for developing nations to pick up on and emulate. What, in your sense, can Ghana learn from Singapore now that we're going into partnership? Well, let me uh, start by saying that we should learn from each other. And uh, Singapore experience has been that uh, since we uh, become uh, independent in 1965, uh, our first priority then was uh, job creation. We had a high unemployment rate and uh, we had uh, many people uh, you know, uh, without much skill. So our first priority as a government then was to create enough jobs so that these people uh, can at least uh, you know, feed themselves and uh, less people will be hungry. So I think we went around to uh, look for investments. You know, anything that can create jobs, uh, any factories, uh, we promoted them. Yes. Then, uh, very quickly, we realised that we uh, needed to improve the skills of the workers. So we have to get them to uh, go to school, uh, get them trained with skills, vocational skills. Uh, and then later on, we realised that we need to improve the infrastructure. We uh, needed more power, we needed to have better port, uh, we needed to, to have a better airport mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time we began to build uh, public housing because yes. people were living in very poor conditions. I think uh, an important part of uh, the uh, sustainable development is really uh, to, to, to plan for long term and then go according to your plan. Yes. Then you will not uh, waste uh, your land resources for example. Yes. You will not uh, uh, do things that will be detrimental to your city yes. and later on you find that you cannot unwind the position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we uh, spent the last uh, two days here, uh, we began to learn a lot more about Accra and uh, about Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have a lot of uh, resources, uh, that is a big plus. Yes. Uh, Singapore doesn't have that. And secondly, you uh, 
um, I think you, you have a critical mass of uh, market you know, by yourselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the manufacturing uh, is actually possible. Uh, you also have a port uh, uh, and you can actually expand on your port and you can uh, plan this aqua city very well. Yes. So uh, in all these things, uh, Singapore companies have you know, our experiences mm -hmm. and we'll be very happy to share. Of course, uh, how fast you can develop also depends on uh, the capacity you can deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think uh, in that respect, we are uh, quite happy to share with you our experience in building institutions, yes. uh, building the public service, building schools, uh, building uh, vocational training, uh, you know, helping uh, people to uh, you know, uh, establish the roles of governments and private sector, mm -hmm. you know, so that uh, each of them do their own thing best. Yes. You know. so, um, but looking at the areas that you're seeking to promote trade and a lot of economic development in these areas, especially looking at our oil and gas, what partnerships are you looking to enhance, especially looking towards um, refining? Because I heard during uh, one of the speeches that there's a lot of refinery potentials that Ghana could do in partnership with Singapore. What are these areas? I think as a developmental concept, uh, you would have to decide, uh, depending on how large your volume of uh, oil and gas production, yes. uh, whether you want to use them as a fuel to mm -hmm. power your uh, generators, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to generate electricity, or you want to process them downstream. Yes. Uh, both are very valid use. Mm -hmm. mm. I suppose at this stage, knowing uh, the fact that you are short of power supply, you really need them to you really need the gas to uh, power up all your power plants. Yes. I think if you have a systematic way of doing that, it would be very good. Uh, other sectors will be uh, many. I think uh, I said urban planning is yes. one mm -hmm. because to, you can imagine Accra as a beautiful city in 20, 30 years' time. And you're going to start the building blocks now. Where do you put the CBD? Where do you put the industrial estate? Where do you put residential? Where do you put public housing? You know, where are your commercial centres? Uh, and how do you link them up with uh, a good network of uh, roads yes. and perhaps subways? Uh, these are uh, all important considerations. Um, I think uh, along with that, we can talk about uh, many things. Uh, we can talk about logistics. Yes. We can talk about parks, uh, we can talk about ports. Mm -hmm. uh, we also see your airport, so you know, obviously there's another area for, for a rebuilding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, the, then subsequently there will be a lot of services related, uh, you know, maybe like uh, schools, like uh, you know, training institutes, uh, even healthcare sectors. Uh, on the manufacturing side, uh, there really are a lot depending on your natural resources. Yeah. Some can be agro processing plants, uh, others can be manufacturing of uh, building material mm -hmm. or processing of minerals, you know, uh, or machineries that are required by this economy. Yes. Um, Honourable, let me ask you at this point, there seems to be a lot of interest looking at Africa's potential and also Asia's growth. There's two key areas in the world where there's a lot of interest economically. But looking at the partnerships that's happened and what's been reported on, it seems like there's now um, a sense of Africa being the place to come and source for resources, and Asia is definitely taking advantage of that. But there's also the negative side of it, where people see it as sort of reaping the resources without mm. helping the people adequately. Mm. How would you address this issue of, is it a fact that we are there's a partnership in place, or is it just the fact that the resources are just being mm. used? Mm. Well, uh, Singapore is a very, very small economy. So by ourselves, 5.3 million people, uh, we don't consume uh, very much of anything mm -hmm. in that sense. Huh? Um, so when we uh, invest, our companies are interested in actually uh, uh, achieving a few things. One is of course, uh, if you set up a manufacturing plant, you want the plant to be able to export mm -hmm. you know, to the region or to the world. So um, I think for that part, uh, if you have manufacturing facilities, clearly you will create jobs. Mm -hmm and jobs creation are good you know, for uh, uh, raising the standard of living in the yes. local economy, mm -hmm. just as other people invested in Singapore and we experienced that. Secondly, I think we are also uh, interested to share our experience of development. Mm -hmm. We went from third world to first world in less than 50 years uh, and uh, uh, these experiences are 
we are very open to share. So I think uh, uh, in your in your situation, if you find it useful, uh, you know you can you can come and visit us. In fact, we already helped train some five hundred and thirty nine uh, officials from Ghana yes. in various aspects of the program, uh, public administration. So so uh, we continue to stay open. Uh, so if we invest, we will be imparting uh, knowledge uh, to your local workforce uh, and uh, you know, helping to skill up your, your workers or professionals. So they in turn uh, can start their businesses or can uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, start uh, championing uh, you know, the, the operations of uh, companies uh, in, in the country. So, uh, so I think the, the trend of growing Asia and Africa trade uh, will continue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for African uh, economies or countries, we uh, wish them well. We hope they continue to build on the capacity uh, because in the end, uh, if they are stronger and they are more independent, uh, they will make very good partners. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking to ETP. Mm. I know this was a bit impromptu, but thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.